Well, 15 years ago, I came out of seminary, and I, th I thought I knew all the answers of life. And I was sponsored by the Southern California Conference until my last semester, and they said, Paul, we will finish sponsoring you, but we don't have a church for you. Uh, well, praise the Lord, there was a church that opened up in Gentry, Arkansas. And let me just bring you up to speed in, about the Midwest. People in the South, uh, they are not really folks that just come up and hug you. I'm from California. I'm a hugger. And when I landed in this church and we went through the interview process, uh, they showed respect, but they are, you know, they, they keep their distance. And now they had a preacher who wanted them to, to, to speak back and, and be engaged in worship. And they're like, Pastor, what's that? I then started this thing I called a hallelujah time in this church. And the hallelujah time pretty much means, church family, that you share not only what God has done for you, but maybe there is a valley or a challenge or an issue that you are going through this morning. And, and just by sharing those things, do you realize that people that may be sitting next to you or in front of you or have come to worship will also pick that up more than being engaged in the teaching portion to see that we are all struggling up the same mountain. Are you with me this morning? So in this new year, and we're not going to do it every weekend or every Sabbath, uh, and if any family is visiting us uh, from our contacts during Revelation Speaks Peace, uh, welcome this morning, and uh, may you come back every Saturday morning. We have our worship right here at the Littleton Avenue Church. But this morning, we're going to do some hallelujah and some praise. Is that okay? So uh, anybody want to share this morning? Just raise your hand. I'll bring the mic to you. You don't have to be too long. Just share uh, what God has done in your life. And it might be a valley that you're going through. Whatever the case may be, the Lord will be glorified. Anybody? Going once. Thank you, Brody. No, Brody would always come through for me. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Whoa, hello. Um, I just like to praise the Lord because He's saved me from myself when I was younger. Uh, he had mm. a plan for me, even though when I didn't know it, and He delivered me here into this wonderful church where I've been all of these years. And I got to walk in this morning and high five about twenty children and say good morning and God bless to them. And that's makes my week, man. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing, Brody. Uh, anybody else? If you don't raise your hand, I'm gonna start picking on you. I'm going to pick on Becca. Becca and Kyle, as they laid out in worship this morning, you know they are fearless teachers of our children in Mount High Academy. And can you imagine putting in all those hours at school and then not just come to church but be engaged and involved at this place after a very long week? Uh, Becca, I don't want to embarrass you, but can you just share a little bit of what happened last week in that prayer conference and... Yeah, that's what I was going to share, so that's perfect. Uh, so I got to go to the prayer conference. It was up at GVR. It's something the Rocky Mountain Conference puts on for our youth. And this is the third time I've gone as a sponsor or as a helper. And I was so unbelievably blessed um, by the music that they did there, uh, by the beauty that's up there. If you've never been there, it's beautiful. And the speakers. Um, and I shared a little bit up there about what they talked about, but they talked about identity and how oftentimes as Christians we identify as sinners, but that's not how God want us, wants us to identify because he, he came to take that identity away from us, and he's given us an identity of freedom. We're saved or redeemed. Um, we are children of God. It's like the prodigal son. Our name isn't the prodigal son. Our name isn't the sinner. We don't work for the pig farmer. No, we're still sons of God, no matter how far we go. Our identity is in him, and that's what changes us. So I am blessed to work with students and to get to do that and to teach them Bible every week. God continually blesses um, both Kyle and I through that, but this last weekend was a special blessing. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Becca. All right. We're well, warming up. Go ahead, Daniel. Thank you, Pastor. I just wanted to say this morning that I am so thankful for the Word of God. 
Um, hearing it preached out at our Revelation Speaks Peace meetings, for any of you who've been there, the Bible is a lamp to our feet and a light to our paths. And the more we dig into it, the more we see that God knows the beginning from the end, and he's laid it out for us. He's, he's shown what happens in human history, and he tells us what's coming in the future, and it's all a message of hope. We don't need to be afraid. And for those of you who are able to join us for Creation Sabbath when Greg Paul's presented today, even science, which sets itself up in opposition to God in the light of his word, if you really examine true science the, and sort through the evidence and the repeatable experiments, we looked at the solar system today. How many of you were there today for Creation Sabbath? Real quick show of hands. It's amazing how time and again, the very planets of our solar system and the moons of those planets, etc., show the glory of God and defy everything up that secular man can put in its face. So I'm just praising the Lord for his word today. Thank you, Daniel. And I'm going to pick one more person. Uh, Doc, is Savannah here today? Oh, Savannah. Come on up here, Savannah. Uh, Savannah, again, is one of our young people who goes to a local public school. Praise the Lord. And uh, as you guys know, we talked to Savannah and Emma a couple weeks ago because we are not only intentional about our children at Mile High Academy, but our children who go to public school. What do you say? And I, uh, when I knew there was prayer conference, I texted Savannah uh, if she wanted to go, and she was a little hesitant because she's not really within that, you know, circle of uh, Mile High Academy kids or other kids. from. And by the way, uh, adults, do you realize that you and I can be like teenagers and we get into our own cliques? of who we know, but don't realize that there are actually savannas in our corporate body that want to be included. Are you with me? That is very important, that we need to be intentional in 2018 uh, that we are able to do that. And Savannah, can you just share about your experience, first of all, and be honest, about prayer conference. Uh, how did you feel going up there? Um, I was kind of nervous because I didn't know, I only, well, I knew a couple of people from here. But other than that, it was a lot of people from Mile High, and I don't go there, so I didn't know a lot of them. And most of them were much younger than me, like eighth grade and maybe freshmen. But it was really eye-opening to see how, you know, how other people think. And the speaker there, I think his name is Jonathan, he was really powerful in awesome. talking about identity and who we are and, you know, who God wants us to be as, you know, as a group. Instead of seeing ourselves as sinners, he wants us to to see ourselves as child, children of God and to spread that love and that message. So uh, in knowing that uh, and experiencing that, that week in Savannah, how do you then now incorporate that and experience here at your local church family on a daily basis at a public institution that, one, don't speak of God and may care less of him and about him? I don't really talk about it at school that much, um, but when it does come up, I, I like to share my views, and I also like to listen to other people's views, mm. even if they aren't Christian or they don't believe in God or anything, mm. um, because they do have perspectives, and they're not, even though if they don't believe in God, you know, they may have some insight that I don't have, so, I mean, it's, I, I do believe what I believe firmly, but it's nice to hear other people's opinions as well. Oh, you're so awesome. Thank you. So everybody say, you rock, Savannah. Yes, thank you, Savannah. Praise the Lord. Again, it is good to be in the house of the Lord, and thank you for sharing, uh, doing our hallelujah time, and uh, how, how much God has done in each of our lives. And, and again, um, I think Daniel touched on it a little bit. Oh, mercy. Can we turn these lights down? Uh, the, thank you. Um, our journey with uh, Pastor Boonshaw is coming to an end. He will be with us again one more week, and then we will have next weekend, and I believe next Saturday night is and will be the last meeting. Um, but if any of you have not been there, I encourage you to at least go and, and hear a powerful message uh, of what uh, Pastor Buncha is 
speaking from the word of God in Revelation speaks peace. And again, if there are some who are here uh, because you're close by the area and have been attending the meetings, um, the last couple of weeks, uh, I've been intentional about speaking on uh, incorporating God's mercy, God's grace, and his love through a very powerful message that we have as a church. Because in the message that we have, we can hold on to the message, but we can forget the God and the Jesus of the message. Are you with me? And uh, it's a great reminder in that journey to know that, yes, we are living in the last hours of this earth's history, I do believe. But may we live with not a spirit of paranoia, but a spirit of expectancy that shouts out, come, Lord Jesus, come. Lord, may you anoint these lips of clay, and may you and you alone be high lifted up is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And those of you who have been following our boys and girls teams, Mile High uh, Academy basketball teams out at Southwestern Adventist University tournament, uh, the boys, are, I believe, have made it to the championship round. They will play this evening. And I think the girls have only lost one game. Uh, correct, uh, Becca? So praise the Lord. Uh, continue to uh, cheer them on this morning. Um, relentless. How relentless are you? This young man, as he grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, and found out that he, or before he, his parents and his parents before him, were unfortunately being judged by the what? By the color of their skin. And this young man decided that his goal in life was he was going to pursue to let others know that they will be judged uh, not by the color of their skin, but he was going to be relentless in letting everybody know uh, that rather, uh, may you judge me by the content of my what? That's right. Until his dying day, that was Dr. Martin Luther King. I don't want to really speak of this young man, but his record has shown that at the age of 40, he can turn back time. And when he is relentless, and I don't know if you've seen the commercial, where Tom Brady speaks of, uh, all you see is what? What you see is Sunday morning. What you don't see is the other how many days of the week. The other six days of the week where he says, I sacrifice my body in my training, and I am relentless. For my team. And it's no wonder next weekend. Tom Brady will be playing in his eighth Super Bowl. Relentless and pursuit of a goal. And what he believes uh, he has been called for. Ten years ago last month. Happiest day of my life. Because I was relentless. I kept going after this young lady, and she said she went from, uh, uh, oh, no, 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 maybe. And when my wife-to-be finally said yes, I said, let's go. And I was so happy on that day because I knew that even if she changed her mind, it's too late. <laughs> I better leave that alone. Being relentless in what's close to you. And then scripture tells, and I didn't, uh, Becca and I didn't talk about this, but she mentioned this old narrative of a young man in the gospel of Luke, the 15th chapter. A young man who wanted not just some, but said, Dad, give me everything that I have coming to me. And as dad gave him everything, you know the old narrative. He not only goes out and, and, and spends not some, but he spends it all, Scripture says, and he finds himself in a far country, broke, 
with nothing and breaking bread. No longer with a waiter serving him expensive uh, food, but he is now breaking bread with whom? With the swine. And he says to himself, and he starts practicing that speech. Uh, well, uh, this is what I'm going to say to dad. Uh, dad, uh, uh, I'm sorry, and I apologize for what I've done. Uh, you don't even have uh, to uh, accept me back as your biological son. Uh, let me just be part of, of the valet guys uh, that park the vehicles. Uh, just be part uh, of who and what you have. Because all I have right now is... I'm breaking bread with the swine. And scripture tells us that when he gets up and he makes his mind up to go home, what he doesn't realize is that his, as he was heading home and practicing his speech, dad was already what? Dad was already headed his direction. Because you see this morning, friends of mine, in our pursuit and being relentless of whatever that's, that thing, it might be something and it might be someone, but whatever that is, Isaac, good to see you this morning, brother. Praise God. Whatever that thing is, whatever that someone is, or whatever that thing may be for you, and, and, and you may be in that muck right here, right now, and you are saying to yourself, uh, I am done, I have been relentless, and I am a, at a far, far, far country. The pastor and everybody else, uh, they don't even have a clue. And I don't know you about you this morning. But praise be his name, that as you are contemplating in that muck of the valley of the issue you may be dealing with, Jesus is already headed your direction. He's coming after you. And he says, when you think you're relentless and you are at that last point and you have given up and you just don't know where else to turn, Jesus says, that's where I begin. And when I begin, I intend to finish it. Lord, anoint these lips of clay. And may the words of these lips and may the message this morning with our corporate body be accepted into your awesome sight is our prayer. May we all say, amen, amen, and amen. We are in the book of Ephesians this morning. Uh, Ephesians, the second chapter, and uh, in the New International Version. And here the apostle is speaking uh, to his congregation in Ephesus and speaking to you uh, this morning in the middle of the, our season of evangelism. And uh, he speaks in verse 1 and he says, As for whom? As for whom? As for you, you were what? You were dead in your what? In your transgressions and your... <laughs> what a way to start out a sermon, huh? By the way, folks, you are all dead. Spiritually. There's no hope. But praise the Lord, there's not a period there after sins, but there's a comma. And in the original text, in the original Greek, that word sins uh, also means missing the mark altogether. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, our men's, uh, our men's group, we had an outing. And you know where we went? We went to the shooting gallery. I think that was the second time I, 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 I went shooting. And as uh, I, I, I was shooting uh, there with... Uh, not my own gun, but one of the <laughs> guns that these guys had. And, uh, I, you know, I, 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 I was pointing it at the target, and I, after the third shot, I, was, I, I put my gun down. I felt good to myself, like, wow, that's pretty good. And the instructor came up behind me, and he said, sir, you have not hit anything. 
He said, if you look behind it, you're hitting behind the mark. You have missed it all together. And for some of us this morning, uh, and, and yes, uh, about to enter into the second month of this new year, uh, some of us are doing a great job, as we have been talking about the last couple of weeks, of running, but we are running not realizing that we are running the which direction? We are running the wrong way. And we think we are shooting and hitting the target, but we are missing the target altogether. You know what's been neat with these uh, meetings with, with Pastor Boonstra? Beginning uh, last week, he had an addictions class right after the teaching. And it's amazing to see people who are just generally just coming and we are collecting things that they're bringing. And people who are just seeking to say, well, if, if this God is that real, uh, I, I, I want to just bring this stuff and, and say, God, uh, can, can, can you just take over that? And sometimes in our flesh, when we try to figure that out on our own, we miss that mark. But the apostle begins out this morning. He says, folks, by the way, you were dead in your transgressions and your sins. And in which you what? Used to live when you follow the ways of the world. Uh, pause there. Uh, the word used, is that a, a past, present, or future tense? Thank you. Somebody in the congregation woke up and he said, oh, I catch you now, preacher. You're saying that we used to be what? Caught up in our sins and in our transgressions and follow the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, uh, the spirit who is now at work, and those who are what? And those who are not being obedient to the will of the Lord. Notice here he is speaking of uh, those uh, who continue uh, to listen to a voice that is not whose? That is not the Lord's. Thank you. All of us also lived amongst them and at one point or at one time gratified the cravings of our flesh and followed it, its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of what? Deserving of wrath and deserving of death. Such a message of hope, don't you think? Can you imagine that Sabbath morning and the, and the church in Ephesus coming together? And here goes Pastor Paul and he says, by the way, folks, you all are done. Ha. Well, praise the Lord for verse 4. And then the apostle says, but whom? But God, because of his what? Not just any love, but what kind of love? But because of God's great, relentless love for whom? For us. He names the source again. God, who is what? Rich in what? In mercy. Made us what? Alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. It is by grace you have been what? Mercy. He says, folks, uh, glad to see you this morning, but by the way, you are dead spiritually, and there is no hope for you. But by the way, because of whom alone? Because of God and God alone and his great what? Love for you and for me. God, he is rich and he is full of what? Of mercy made us what? 
Alive with whom? Even when we were what? Even when you and I were dead in our sins, we have been made alive in him. Wow. I don't know for those of you who have been going to this very special fellowship for quite a while, uh, but have you noticed that in the last, uh, I would say probably five, six months, and, and especially since November to this morning, how many visitors we have come, who have come to this church? Yes, praise the Lord, amen. And I believe they have come to this very special fellowship, not because of the preacher, not because of the praise team, not because of anything else, but because they have come to a place and they have come to a culture and to an environment that they can find acceptance. And they can experience God's grace at their level. And then, then they are allowed to grow in a place and in a space and in a, uh, a pace of a walk that says, uh, God, I'm there with you. I'm not quite there, but I'm on my way. I'm on my way. And may this place continue to be a place that is full, not of ourselves and not of our flesh, but because it's full of God's grace, his mercy, and not just any kind of love, but his great love. It is by what? It is by grace that you have been saved. And God's mouthpiece speaking here is not somebody... That is speaking out of theory. But this is Paul who was once whom? That's right. This is Paul who was once Saul. The baddest of the bad. Acts chapter uh, uh, 9 when he says, uh, it says there that he was breathing what? Murderous threats against whom? Against people of the way. Against Christians. To take their lives. This same Paul. Sorry. Saul. And now Paul. Is speaking to the church in Ephesus. And he's reminding you and I. That yes. We were doomed for eternal death. But God who is full of grace. Who is full of mercy. And who is full of great love. We are no longer dead in our sins. But by his grace, you have been what? You have been saved. Verse 8 of the same chapter. For it is by what? For it is by grace you have been what? Saved through what? Ah. So God says, folks, by the way, my grace is sufficient for you. And my grace is always relentless in coming after you. But all I ask for you is to have what? Just have some faith. Just have some faith that I'm in control. Just have some faith uh, that whatever predicament you are going through right now and right here, that God will continue to lead in that circumstance. And at the end of the rainbow, he will be high and lifted up. Through faith. And this is not from what? Yourselves. It is a word of God. This is God's gift. God's gift, as we and I, you and I spoke about the last time we were together, is giving us the freedom of choice. And even after he's given us that freedom of choice, and even after we disobeyed, remember the last time we were together, uh, we looked at Genesis chapter 7, uh, that, that after our first parents disobeyed, uh, what, God, what function did God do? He still came in the coolness of the day. And what did he do? That's right. He called them by what? He called them by name. Even though he knew where they were. 
he still called them by name because he wanted to make sure that they had a choice. And they knew they had the choice to choose for him or against him. Through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not by works so that no one can what? So that no one can post. <laughs> God says, by the way, the reason why I ask you to have faith is so that you know that you still have to trust in whom? That you have to trust in me, God. Because I know that your flesh, my flesh, your human flesh is always quickly to take the what? To take the credit. I want to make sure that you don't boast and think that this is all about you. Far from it. I want to make sure that when you have faith, that you will continue to lean on me and allow me, Jesus, to continue to work in your lives. And verse 10. For we are God's what? For you and I are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus to do what kind of works? Good works. Which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Let's back up. First and foremost, Jesus says that in my relentless grace and in me coming after you, the part you play again is what? I, God says, am full of uh, grace, of mercy, and not just any love, but great love. But in all of that, I am just calling you to have some faith in me. And that faith simply means uh, that uh, you trust that you what? Trust in the Lord. And as you trust in him and have faith in him, uh, Jesus says, by the way, folks, <laughs> you are my workmanship. You are my creation. And you have been created to do what kind of work? You have been created to do good work. And as you have been created to do good work, God then says, uh, family and friends of this very special fellowship of the Littleton Avenue Church, as you and I come weekend in, weekend out on Saturdays on the seventh day of the week in worshiping him, and some new folks may be coming because of these meetings to just find the Jesus that's been spoken about in downtown, my prayer is that there's not a disconnect of that powerful Jesus and they come into a fellowship that they don't find that Jesus at all. That they will come and they will not just stay, but they will be engaged because they feel the presence of the Lord right here, right now. And not just on the seventh day of the week, but it extends to the rest of the week in our journey. The story is told of St. Paul's Cathedral in England. The architect's name is Sir Charles Wren. And as he built this cathedral in the 1600s, uh, in the 16th century, uh, excuse me, you know, it burned uh, there uh, in England. St. Paul's Cathedral burned, but then they started to rebuild. And after the fire, the structure had stayed. And as they were rebuilding and as they were putting these uh, stained glass windows, beautiful stained glass windows, these murals uh, together again. One day as the workers were working on one of these murals, uh, it collapsed and guess what happened? 
it shattered into pieces. And as the workers came together and as they were going to collect these pieces uh, to uh, throw away and start all over, uh, Sir Charles said, stop, hold on. I want you guys to put away your brooms and I want you to pick every little piece of this broken glass and we are going to bring it back together and bring this mural back together and we are going to replace it back up just how it looks. Because we want people, generations from now, as they come through this place, yes, it has burned once, but we want them to see that in this broken mural, this is what my Jesus is about. He's about replacing broken lives. We want people to come into this very special place and not be in all the building, but to know that just like this mural, my Jesus, my Savior, he replaces broken lives. Yes, child, broken lives. <laughs> God's relentless grace begins, friends of mine, when you and I end. And I don't know how broken you are this morning. But Jesus simply says, just come unto me. Not when the skies are blue, but in the midst of your storm. Because I am full and rich of mercy and not just any kind of love, but great unconditional love. And I've shown that on the cross of Calvary. And because of my redemptive blood, I will bring your broken lives back together again because I am about completing your lives, not because of you, but all because of me. I don't know where that journey is for you this morning, but that is my prayer, that as we continue in moving forward in the calling that God has called us to right here at this very special place at the Littleton Avenue Church, that we will lift him high and lift it up. Yes, even in our brokenness. And allow the Lord to fill in the gaps with his grace, his mercy, and his love. That is our prayer this morning, Father. In the sanctity and in the quietness of your house. Lord, as... We hear the voices of our little children. We want them to know that this is a place where they can not only cry, not only make noise, but also make mistakes. Because this is a place, and by your grace, and you being relentless and coming after us, and if this world lasts, may you never, ever depart from them. And may they know that you are a God that is about replacing broken lives and making it whole. We praise you for your grace. We praise you for your mercy and your love. But you also challenge us this morning, Lord, to just have some faith in you. Some of us, our faith tanks is running on fumes. Some of us don't know where to turn, and some of us just cannot get over that muck. Some of us can't just get over what we are faced with daily. But like the prodigal, may we know, believe, and claim that before we turn home, you are already coming our direction. Lord, like the church in Ephesus, May you also burn a fire in us right here at the Little Tenavenous Church. That this season of evangelism is not just in the name of an event, but it's in the name of reclaiming a flame and a love of not only the truth that we have as a Avenous Church, but to be closer and drawn closer to who you are. And that is a resurrected Savior that sits high while you pick each and every one of us up. And now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. 
May he walk before you, behind you, beside you. Oh, may you live outside each and every one of us. To your glory and your honor is our prayer. May all God's people say, amen, amen. Thanks for being here this morning. Have a great week.